We are here with actor Adam Jacobs, who is currently starring as Aladdin uh, on Broadway, which That's is it. a huge deal. Why don't you tell us um, a little bit about, I know you started as a pianist. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would be on a Broadway stage opening as the title character? Uh, at the time when I was just playing piano and playing soccer, uh, <laughs> I had no idea, obviously, that... Um, even being an actor was was something that I wanted to do. It wasn't until high school, when I was cast as Billy Bigelow in Carousel and and uh, Che and Evita, when we, <laughs> which was a pretty big undertaking for uh, for a high school to do. But um, my high school mentor Peter Peter Devine sort of brought brought me uh, under his wing and and uh, really encouraged me to pursue a life in the arts. And he said I had the talent and he helped foster it. And it was then when I decided I wanted to become an actor professionally. And you've been in a number of the Broadway shows that are that were big Disney hits. Like, did you, uh, yeah. how'd you get your way into the Disney family and then just <sighs> stayed part of it? It's really interesting. I mean, I did the Cinderella tour back in like 2001, um, but that wasn't associated with Disney. But that was my first sort of Disney role. I played the prince. Um, and then from then on, I just kept getting leading roles that were sort of in that uh, vein. And then, you know, I, I didn't start working with Disney first. My sister, Ariel Jacobs, she's mm -hmm. four years younger, and she uh, got cast as Gabriela Montez in Disney's High School Musical. And so she toured with them. So everybody at Disney got to know her first. And then my wife, Kelly, got cast in Mary Poppins on the tour and then on Broadway. And so everybody got to know her. And around the time that she was cast in Mary Poppins, I was cast as Simba in The Lion King on the road, and then brought and then was brought to New York mm -hmm. with that. So uh, it's a Disney uh, family for sure. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. Disney extravaganza. <laughs> uh, we've we've had some. They've been great. They've been really supported us uh, as a family and um, treated us like family. It's great. Right. Now, what was it like touring versus being stable here in New York? Yeah, or as stable as an actor can be. Right. I mean, I've I've done four national tours now, and uh, by the end of Lion King, I was like, I think I'm ready to just be in New York now, mm -hmm. if I can, and work in New York. I mean, that's that's the goal. That's everyone's uh, every New York actor's goal is to, to be able to work in New York, live in New York, and um, and survive and thrive. So I've been fortunate uh, since getting off the road to be able to you know, do workshops and things and, and get cast in, in Broadway shows. And it's been, uh, it's been amazing. And I've been, I feel very fortunate and grateful that uh, my career has taken me along that path. Um, yeah, touring is, is not for the faint of heart, for sure. You know, living out of a suitcase and going from city to city, it's not as glamorous as a lot of actors may think it might be, because mm -hmm. uh, it could get old pretty quickly. But... Um, luckily, you know, I had my wife, who's also an actress, so she sort of understood that concept, and she didn't, you know, freak out whenever I left. And um, and if you have a support system that's strong, and if you have, you know, family that uh, you can stay connected to, I, I think that really helps. We had a rule where we would see each other every three weeks, mm -hmm. um, and that was that's just what worked for us. And and that's what I sort of tell couples, you know, who are going through it. I'm like. You know, try and think of when when you see them, know when the next time is going to be when you're going to see them before they leave. Like, right. that helps. Like, that's just a little tidbit of advice that I give to couples on the road, for example. And this was pre-kids, right? Uh, this is pre-kids, yeah. yeah, yeah. It would yeah. be a little different now with kids, right? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to go on the road. Yeah, yeah, although you never know. I mean, if they're going to pay me a... Ten thousand dollars a week. To well, enough to take them with to you. To take, yeah. like, take them I with me. I should say alone, you would yeah. go. <laughs> alone, I would never go. No, no. So now you're playing the title character in Aladdin. Yeah. And what is it like going up on that stage and just mystifying young theater goers and their parents as well? Because I'm sure your show attracts a younger, younger audience. Yeah. It, like, it, it, oh, it's Aladdin. It attracts. Yeah. Well, it attracts people my age. It attracts mm -hmm. people who are new to Aladdin. It attracts the people who know Aladdin uh, from from its early beginning. So. It, um, and people who don't know Aladdin at all just leave the theater loving the show. It, it's been really a pleasure to to see everybody from those from 
seven to ninety two. You know, love that show. Uh, go go away from the theater with the same experience of just joy and happiness, and mm -hmm. um, that's what you, that's what everyone wants. Just to to have a, a fun experience at the theater, and Aladdin delivers that. Now I saw you on the Tony Awards, and yeah. they keep that energy up. Like, you're <laughs> always smiling, and I'm yeah. sure it has to be that way throughout the entire show. So yeah, what yeah, do you do to yeah. like? For that two and a half, uh, two and three you know, lots hours. Lots of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of coffee, lots of fruit. I, I, I even eat a lot of uh, mangoes. Uh -huh. um, no, but. Um, you heard it, it is, here first mangoes. Are mangoes. Like happiness. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, it is a lot of energy to sustain. And uh, I don't have to go to the gym as much for cardio anymore. Right. You know, that, that show gives it to me. I'll just do some weights in my room before the show, um, you know, and a few things here and there. But. Uh, my wife has taken on the brunt of raising the twin boys right now. Oh, good, only twins. Yeah, only twins, and they're f almost five months. And she's been able to to let me sleep. Otherwise, two show days would be impossible, you know. Right. So, um, and uh, yeah, I just make sure I stay healthy and, and eat well and, and get as much sleep as I can uh, and still help out at home as much as I can. Um, it's But it's, you know, it's a juggling act. It, is, that, and, it does um, sound like one. And it's, you know balancing all those things and still being able to deliver uh, a good show every night. Is there something that you think about uh, when you're about to go out there that gets you pumped or do you just have it ingrained in you? That um, well, when that? I hear that downbeat go and I hear the, the, the band start kicking it, uh, that just gives me automatic juice. When they pull the curtain away and the genie's revealed mm -hmm. and you hear the, that a first applause for him when he comes out, that gets me excited. Um, you know, singing proud of your boy and one jump, one jump literally gets my heart rate going because I'm jumping and running and, <laughs> and singing at the same appropriately time. Appropriately named. A appropriately named, yeah. So um, that's a good warm up for me <laughs> for the show if I'm not, if I haven't warmed up, uh -huh. uh, which never happens. I don't know. Don't, you know. Yeah. Delete. Delete. No. Delete. <laughs> Editing. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I think just. I, I always think about the audience out there and how excited they are, and that just gives me enough energy to to get going, for sure. Now, today you were gracious enough to do this interview pre-show, post-CD signing. Yes. So I very much appreciate that. Of course. What was it like to have fans lined up to see you guys? Oh, it felt great. It was heartwarming to see them. One, the lady was in first in line who had been there for six hours. Wow. Like, she, you know, just a huge fan of, of Disney, of Aladdin. And um, I got... I got some like people were bringing me stuff like this fan brought this uh, drawing of Aladdin that she made herself and you know That's people are giving cool. me all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I got like oh here's my placard that they put on the table. I think I'm gonna bring it to restaurants and you just should. like put it on the table. <laughs> It'll be like <laughs> Just like bam. And then everybody will think, who the hell is this guy? Why does he think he could just reserve tables that's all the right. time? That's right. That's what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> I stole it. Because I'm a thief. Because I'm a lad. Um, um, sorry, what's your question? <laughs> you, you were answering it <laughs> about know. meeting the fans and oh, how yeah. great that's been. They're great. Um, it always feels good to, to see somebody who's so enthusiastic about Aladdin. And um, just to give them, you know... Uh, what they expected from the film and mm -hmm. and to meet those expectations because there are a lot of high expectations that come with playing an iconic role like that and one that everybody knows and loves so um, when you see the those Disney fanatics being extra happy then you know you've done it justice you know you've done right. the, you've done the role justice the show justice and so it must good. be a weird transition for them because a lot to see Aladdin uh, like you showed me the the uh, animated version, and then yeah. all of a sudden here you are coming alive in a different yeah. way. There's obviously have, has to be a different reaction to that. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know, like I said, people have the certain expectations from the film coming in, um, and then they're pleasantly surprised. I think because you know the movie is an action adventure film, 90 minutes, but we have to extend our version of the show to two and a half hours and flush out the characters. For example, I get to sing Proud of Your Boy, mm -hmm. which uh, is another element where I'm singing to my mother who's passed away, saying, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna do you proud. I'm going to become the person that I told you I was going to be. I promised I was going to be. And so having that extra element, it just really is the momentum that carries me through the whole show. Um, 
so it's stuff like that where I feel fans and audience members uh, are grateful for. They're appreciative of that the depth and and you know and I try to we have the genie who's going crazy and, and doing all this crazy antics. Yeah, he and just then, stood there on the Tony Awards and yeah, did nothing. And it, you got to prop him up. <laughs> it, it, you know, and I and I'm sort of the I have to be gr the grounded one, right? Mm -hmm. The one who's um, telling, you know, living the story, telling the story, storytelling, uh, and, but that's what I love to do, and, um, you know, it's, having that song just gives me even a, a better arc as a character, uh, in the show, so, I'm very grateful they decided to put it back in. Now, what was it like being on the cover of Backstage Magazine? That's a big deal. <laughs> that was glamorous, yeah, yeah, I have to thank my publicist for that, uh, I did hire a publicist for a little bit up through the Tonys, and, um, I never had one before, so it was exciting. He got me that that uh, that gig, and uh, yeah, it was that was big. All my friends and family were super excited. I was excited, um, and that's something you know in this business. Anything that you can have that's real, mm -hmm. and like the album, the cast album, the back, the cover of the magazine, something that you can then show your family, your kids later Absolutely. on. Uh, it's so valuable, and I'm so appreciative, you know, that I have that, and uh, I can check that off the bucket list. I've been on the cover of a magazine, and um, well, that's you know. not to be your last one. No, oh, yeah, right. The acting, the uh, acting mecca, that's Bible, right. whatever you want to call it. Men's health next. That's yeah. right. Yeah, right <laughs> right after one. me. <laughs> I actually yeah. worked for that company. <laughs> um, would you uh, give advice to people who are just starting out? You know, you know what they really need to do. Um, sure. It probably is different from when you started because everything is a lot more competitive nowadays. It's true. I mean, with shows like Glee and um, you know all these, uh, but especially Glee and Smash and mm -hmm. how it's become a lot more uh, commercialized. And, and there's so many more musical theater programs across the country now that are good, that mm -hmm. are you know churning out students who are who know you know who have really good training. So uh, I, I think you know it's important to not get lost in, in just the technical aspects of it and it's important to train obviously and to to work on your craft but uh, I always find that it's the best actors that I like to watch seem to have a knowledge of that spread across uh, many different um, you know things like history chemistry if you can if you can sort of know a lot about, or no, sorry, if you can know a little about a lot of subjects, mm -hmm. I find that for some reason that helps as an actor, because you never know when you're going to use that information, um, something random that's going to come up in a show about, you know, mathematics or whatever, that if you have sort of a general base knowledge of, of a lot of different things, uh, it just helps inform your character. I like to tell students, you know, to work on the thing you're not the best at. You know, if you're a great singer, you know, maybe work on your acting and your dance. The acting is the core of it all. So you want to be able to um, access your acting and to tell stories. I mean, because that's ultimately what you're doing. When you're dancing, you're telling a story. When you're singing, you're telling a story. So make sure that you work on, on that um, and staying truthful to that. Um, and then I also like to say, when you're going on auditions, don't think you ever have to put anything on. What what the per people behind the desk they want to get to know you, right? So try to bring yourself to whatever you're doing as much as you can, um, and that way you're going to personalize it. It'll be more real. It'll be more believable, and you have a greater chance of of getting cast. Perfect. Yeah. I thank you so much for doing this interview in the middle of your uh, busy day. No problem. <laughs> When's part two? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a great weekend and a great weekend worth of shows. Thanks, Brian.